Well, good morning, my friends. Cindy Eric here with praying the names of God. I hope that you're well today. I'm well today. So today, well, before I tell you what we're going to do today, I'm going to read one of these scripture cards that my friends Clay and Mallory gave me. This is from Psalm 45 too. You are the most excellent of men and your lips have been anointed with grace since God has blessed you forever. Forever. That's a long time. So today, today's uh, name for God is the Lord is my shepherd, Yahweh Rui. And I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but that's how it's spelled. For at least part of their history, the Hebrews were a nomadic people, wandering from place to place and seeking pasture for their herds of sheep, goats, and cattle. To sustain their livelihood, it was vital for shepherds to keep their animals from straying to protect them from thieves and wild animals, and to provide them with plentiful pastures. In the ancient Near East and in Israel itself, shepherd eventually became a metaphor for kings. The Hebrew scriptures speak of God as the shepherd of his people and apply this image to religious leaders as well. The New Testament presents Jesus as the good shepherd. He protects the lives of his sheep. by forfeiting his own life. That's pretty deep. That's pretty heavy. When you pray to the Lord your shepherd, you are praying to the one, capital O, who watches over you day and night, feeding you and leading you safely on the path of righteousness. Key scriptures from Psalm 23, 1 through 3, which reads as this. Yahweh is my roe. I am never in need. I love this. He makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside peaceful waters. He renews my soul. He guides me along the path of righteousness for the sake of his name. Or as many of us know it is for his name's sake. God reveals his name in scripture. Psalm 23. And if you want to open your Bible at this point in time, feel free to read along to Psalm 23. Yahweh is my Ruah. I am never in need. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me besides peaceful waters. He renews my soul. He guides me along the paths of righteousness for the sake of his name. Even though I walk through the, the valley of death, the dark valley of death, this version says. Because you are with me, I fear no harm. Your rod and your staff, they give me courage. You prepare a banquet for me while my enemies watch or in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup, it overflows. Certainly goodness and mercy will stay close to me all the days of my life and I will remain in Yahweh's house for days without end. Yeah, the, I always look for a, a, um, a segment, a word to like just jump out at me. Um, and that what jumped out at me right there was my cup overflows. And I frequently ask the Lord to just fill me up to overflowing so that the overflow can just branch out and touch people that I come in contact with and to bless them in some way um, whether they you know whether they know it's me or not of course um, but fill me up to overflowing there's a song there's a song there's a song that goes like that fill me up to overflowing but it's 
it's it's it's it's not strictly for my benefit. It's for the others around me that I come in contact with, or that I interact with in, in any in any manner, whether it's business, whether it's uh, family, whether it's friends, whether it's neighbors, whether it's the grocery store, or the gas station, or Walmart, or everywhere. Understanding the name. Shepherding was one of the earliest human occupations. A family's wealth was measured by how many sheep, goats, cows, horses, camels, and or assets a man owned. Abel, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and David were all shepherds. Before David fought Goliath, he told Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it. I struck it and I rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. That's from 1 Samuel 17, 34 and 35. I love, love, love reading and listening to the Audible Bible in 1 and 2 Samuel. 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, there's just so much, uh, I mean there's so much to learn in the whole Bible, but I really love um, those aspects of the Old Testament. It was the shepherd's responsibility to count each animal in order to make sure none had gone astray. At night, sheep were kept in simple enclosures in caves or within walls made from bushes. At times a shepherd would sleep with his body lying across the gate to the enclosure in order to keep the sheep safe. Ooh, I just got a flash visual in my mind's eye of Jesus on the cross. Jesus on the cross in order to keep us safe. Though Israel's religious leaders were also referred to as shepherds, they were often chided for their failure, failure to watch over the flock of God. Both then and now, Yahweh Roe, let's see how it really is pronounced. Yah, Yahweh Roe, Roe, R-O-E-H, Roe. Yahweh Roe, Roe, Yahweh Roe is the one true shepherd of his people. Praise the Lord. I love that. And I haven't heard, I haven't not learned that name. Today's my first day learning that name for God. I love it. I, I, I love learning. I strive to learn something new every day or more than one something new every day. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to address the first question like I always do. There's, there's a whole list of questions here. If you have the book, you go, you can dive deep and spend a whole week studying this. That's why there's 52 weeks. Um, read the first three sentences of this familiar psalm slowly, then close your eyes, imagine you are the sheep, and what do you see and what do you feel? Wow, so, you know, instantly, instantly as I was reading that, that mind's eye visual I just got of Jesus on the cross, for me, protecting me for eternity. He gives us everything that we need. He's our all in all. He's our all in all. He loves you. He loves me. And he knows me. And he knows you. He knows us, everything about us. And he still loves us. And he loved us before we accepted him. Long before we accepted him. Sorry. Um, wow. I will continue. I could read the page. Praying a passage with God's name. As Yahweh Roe, the Lord my shepherd, 
for everything you need as you read in Psalm 80, verse 1. Thank Him for being your shepherd. Open your ears, O Roe of Israel, the one who leads the descendants of Joseph like sheep, the one who is enthroned over the angels. Do you know there's angels all around? There are angels all around. Some people have that gift of being able to see them. Apparently they're really big. And uh, scary at first, I think, because they're so big the first time somebody sees them. But I've been praying for that gift for a while. I haven't prayed it for it in a while, but seeing things in the spirit realm also can open your eyes to the dark spirit realm, what's going on. And we know there's a lot of things going on. Look up and read Isaiah 40, verse 10 through 11, and take a moment to take a moment to pray. I'm going to open it up. I didn't realize it was going to ask you, but I'd like to because Isaiah 40 is really cool. Isaiah 40, 10 through 11. Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. Praise the Lord for his word. Praise the Lord for his word. I will feed them in good pasture, and they will graze on the mountains of Israel. They will rest on the good land where they graze, and they will feed on the best pastures in the mountains of Israel. I will take care of my sheep and lead them to rest, declares Adonai Yahweh. Ezekiel 34, 14 to 15. I am the good shepherd for my sheep. I know my sheep as the Father knows me. I know my sheep as the Father knows me. Wow. My sheep know me as I know the Father, so I give my life for my sheep. I also have other sheep that are not from this pen. I must lead them. They too will respond to my voice. So they will be one flock with one shepherd. Oh yes, Lord. From John 10, 14 to 18. The Father loves me because I give my life in order to take it all back again. No one takes my life from me. I give my life of my own free will. I have the authority to give my life, and I have the authority to take my life back again. That is what my Father ordered me to do. John 10, 14 to 18. You know, I used to think, you know, I used to be mad at uh, the Israelites for rejecting Jesus and for turning them over to be um, crucified on the cross. But Jesus had the power to stop it. His mission in obedience to the Father was to die on that cross. And everything happened the way it was supposed to. And everything that happens now is the way it's supposed to, even if it's hard. We're in some hard times right now in August of 2024 as we come upon the election season and all the turmoil and all the division. I'm um, in an area here in New Jersey where there's uh, unity. Uh, there's groups. There's groups um, bringing, unifying the body of Christ. We need to unify. We need to unify all denominations, all people. 
anyway, um, the uh, deeper study scriptures that is recommend, are recommended here is Ezekiel 34, Psalm 28, 9, and Isaiah 53. <clears throat> and I will pray. I thank you, Lord, for that. I thank you for those moments with you that, that you just you shook me to the core in understanding and having a deep sense of who you are and what you do for me and what you've done for me. I thank you, Yahweh, real way. The Lord, my shepherd, thank you for your guiding light, your guiding principles. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're with me all the time, showing me the way in these difficult paths. I pray for each one that might be listening right now, Lord. I pray for each one, God, that your Holy Spirit would just fall on them, Lord, and minister to them where they are. Send your angels to surround them in their time of difficulties and to rejoice with them in their, in their rejoicing. And I rejoice today because I have breath and I have life and I have purpose. You have given me destiny and purpose. And I thank you, Lord, that that's, that's where I move, God. And sometimes I stumble. Frequently I stumble. And I thank you that you're right there to pick me back up and bring me on the track. I choose path of righteousness, but I cannot do it alone. I pray that for each one. I pray for healing and wholeness. I pray for healing of the mind, healing of the heart hearing of the spirit and the body for anyone that needs and we all need if we're alive and breathing we need my pastor says in Tallahassee Matt Stone if we're breathing we need healing thank you Lord for your healing power thank you for your grace and your mercy and thank you Lord my shepherd in Jesus mighty name amen so I pray that you're blessed today, that you dive deeper in his word. It is so rich and beautiful. I can't get enough of it. And uh, I pray that if that's not the same for you, that that will happen soon for you. And uh, I love you. But you know, he loves you so much more. As I always say, he loves you more than you could ever fathom. I think if we understood the love, we'd just fall faint. If we understood how much he loved us. I think we'd just fall faint. God bless you.